Christmas with Unity. I'm well rested. How about you? Uh, <laughs> you've been out there sleeping. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I've been. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> In this module, we're going to talk about building for Windows. Nice. <laughs> The process has not changed much, so so this will likely be a, a sh probably the shortest module today. Some of our other modules we went over quite a bit. Uh, this is going to be the easy one, um, not because of the fact that Windows 10 hasn't been released yet. Uh, although the process, I expect this is just easy to do, fairly simple, right? Yeah, it's very similar to what we did previously. We All right, so remember. building for Windows it sounds kind of funny. Building for it does Windows. like building Windows. Well, wait, <laughs> I just realized. So this should really <laughs> say. We're going we're gonna to do an on-the-fly. <laughs> Just wanted to see if anybody was paying attention yeah. out there. <laughs> hey, nice transition. UWP, Universal Windows Platform. What is Universal Windows Platform, Adam? Windows 10 is going to power, and currently does power, a huge variety of, of hardware. From phones, I demoed the phone that was actually running Windows 10 earlier. That uh, Loaded Windows 10 up on that last night, loaded the game on there, and it ran great using the standard asset mobile controls on there. Um, so anything from a phone, phablet, small tablet, large tablet, on up, on up to my laptop, to desktops, to our Surface Hubs, which were the big PPI, big touchscreen displays, which are embedded uh, built-in Windows nice. systems, which are cool, uh, to even the Xbox is going to be a universal Windows platform um, that you're going to be able to deploy to. In fact, uh, Brian Peake and Jaime Rodriguez in their build talk this year showed a quick demo of actually taking um, uh, Xbox UWP, Universal Windows Platform app, and deploying it out to an Xbox, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And we have also announced officially uh, our partnership with you guys uh, for the Unity SDK coming out for the HoloLens. So that's going to be very exciting. Unfortunately, we don't have those devices here today. Uh, nor tomorrow will I have those devices with me either. <laughs> uh, they are very cool. They are very cool. Uh, Windows 10 will also run on small IoT, Internet of Things type devices like the Raspberry Pi. And the idea is that you're going to be able to take one package and essentially run it across an entire range of hardware. Now, it may or may not make sense to do that. So, for example, if I take a game, I, I might want to run that game on a small tablet, and I might also want to run it then on a, a system like this, or maybe even the Xbox, but maybe it's not the right experience for the HoloLens or a Raspberry Pi because I'm, I'm killing memory requirements. But the idea is that we have a consistent API compatibility using these contracts across these different systems. So it will, in theory, work. Uh, but again, you know, we need to develop four different device capabilities, uh, four different experiences. Um, take a uh, take a Raspberry Pi, a little device. Do I have a a graphics card that's powerful that I can render with under? No, of course not. So you have to kind of, you know, tailor to whatever you're going to deploy to. And with Windows 10, we have something called device families. Now, single platform, various device families. The term Windows Mobile kind of went away because those are old version of the phones. And whenever people would say Windows Mobile, I'm like, it's not Windows Mobile, it's Windows Phone. And now we're calling Windows 10 the mobile SKU mobile, which is small devices. I think it's less than uh, six inches, I believe it is. Uh, then we have the desktop and mobile. And there's going to be other device families as well. But again, we're going to be deploying potentially to a, a huge range of hardware. I think we've stated something like a billion devices running Windows 10. It's going to be pretty awesome. Now, the build inside of Unity is, is pretty simple. Um, it's very similar to what we did with uh, Windows 8, 8.1 builds. And uh, we did that in our prior MVA that we did. The, uh, the one we had the link for the beginning, aka.ms forward slash uh, free unity training. And there's also uh, Jaime Rodriguez, and I think some other folks did the, uh, the one building for the Windows platform from Unity. So they did some really cool uh, porting and um, a native device specific stuff on there. But let's talk about a couple of settings that you need in the build settings here. So, player settings. This is important. Ensure that you set deferred and linear. Now, where is all this noted? Um, I might be jumping ahead just a little bit here, but let's save all this. Actually, <laughs> this is a carryover from the last module <laughs> since we actually took a break. Now, the timing is a little bit off there, but you notice, and I could actually center that a little bit better here, but he falls down, enters the starting space there, go. So that was the particle that Matt just made, and I just died. <laughs> In the last one, how did I do that? I, uh, I simply have a collider here. I took a square just so we did our level boundary. I took out a, um, a cube and I scaled it out and I made it invisible. 
And I just simply had a little code there that when you come in contact with that trigger, we enable that particle effect. So the particle effect that Matt sent me is just a child. And again, I know I'm getting off topic of Windows 10 here, but we had to kind of have this carryover because the, the deal was he gave it to me last module, and during your break, I got to work in here. I didn't see him send you anything. I saw like a weird USB. You weren't even here. You were out no, sleeping. I, I thought <laughs> I was monitoring remotely. So I have a sigil detect script, which is very basic and has just a public variable that uh, contains our particle effect in it that we have to drag and drop into it, and on trigger enter. I don't need any of this other stuff down here. I can actually delete that. That's the entire thing we have there. On trigger enter. When, when the player falls on the box here, the sigil, we enable its child particle effect. So in order to set that reference, I just dragged it and dropped it right there. I then disabled it so it wasn't active when we started. And as soon as a player hits it, it just, when you set active behind the scenes, this, all it does is go click. <laughs> That's what set active does. Just enables it behind the scenes so when we fall on top of it, uh, then it becomes active. And then we get to see the particle effect. Bam. That particle effect. <laughs> what just happened on that time? There we go. All right. That was a little delayed. <laughs> the system, it's the end of the day. System's tired, too. All right. Uh, so the deferred and linear settings here affect the lighting. Let's go ahead and change those. So if we go to File, Build Settings. Yeah, I think it's worth pointing out those are settings you should set regardless of whether you're going out to Windows. Really, regardless. Even so PBR, even if you're... Standard shader. Even if you're on just a PC standalone build, for example, go into player settings and deferred and linear, deferred and linear. I'm going to go to my Windows Store settings and click player settings and check deferred and linear. If not, things will look different. So let's just show what this looks like. Notice those nice purple lights back there. Let's go to forward and gamma. And yeah, looks very different. Yeah, with a lot of light sources, we get some wackiness uh, when we're in forward rendering. And then the linear um, color space, that just solves for, well, I don't know how many people know about gamma being artificially ramped up to support certain devices. And it just really washes out the PBR. Well, that sounds funny. It just <laughs> washes out the color range. It uh, washes out the PBR and the In your left, water down PBR. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to these, uh, back to the settings here. So make sure you set deferred and linear, and also change your company name. And let's go over here, player settings, scroll up. Maybe a great name for a company. Three Guys Games, we'll call it that since we're all here today. Three Guys Games, Vamp Kid 3D. And we're going to cover a little bit of these momentarily. Let's go back to our slides here. Now. The build, as I mentioned, Windows 10 supports device families. So there's a mobile device family, a desktop device family, and additional will come. So I would expect to see an Xbox device family and a HoloLens, and you're going to be able to specify which device family your package will run on. Uh, if I only want to target mobile devices, I will make sure that oh, I, I specify that that package will only target mobile. Now, the store is not open yet to developers. So we can't see exactly to the you know, public facing world how this whole process works at, how you're going to specify the device family, where you're going to specify that. But just know once all these bits are released, you're going to be able to specify a device family and choose where you can and cannot go to, uh, which device families you can and can't go to. Uh, multiple builds still work. In other words, if you want to create a build for the phone and you want to, uh, for a mobile device family and a separate one for a desktop family, you can still do that. Uh, same, similar to what you can do now. You can create a phone build and uh, then you can create a, a separate build. Um, now, going forward, right now, if we create a universal build, for example, it's going to create, for Windows 8.1, it creates an actual, uh, the Windows phone build, and then we actually have the build for all the, the other Windows Store devices. So like my, my tablets, my desktops, um, multiple packages. Going forward, we actually get truly one package. Uh, we get different binaries that roll up into that single package, and uh, it's going to work. Uh, it's a pretty cool process. Now, have you worked with asset bundles at all? A little bit. So asset bundles <clears throat> is a process that Unity has. If you have a low quality set of assets and a high quality set of assets, you can basically say, all right, um, depending on some criteria, uh, maybe my screen size or some criteria, 
choose the low quality of assets, or let's say I'm on a big screen, choose the high quality version of assets, and uh, you can actually stream them from remote locations. So that's one process. It, does, it takes a little bit of work to set up, um, although much easier in Unity 5. There's a great Unite talk uh, that you guys did on setting those up. And um, you do have to host those packages somewhere yourself, and then uh, you can stream those in. So it's one, one process, but again, you can create the separate builds, or you can take one to uh, run across multiple device families. Now this currently requires uh, what's going to be released as uh, Unity 5.2. If you happen to be part of the Windows Store beta, uh, you can see that um, currently in action now. Uh, if you're not, then Unity has announced uh, as part of their public roadmap that that will come in Unity 5.2. Yeah, actually, I was just pulling that up here. The uh, the new roadmap just came out. So if you go to unity3d.com, you can see right on the home page. Cool. Show it on your screen. Let's uh, let's look at a couple of those features real quick here. Yeah. Let me uh, let me just get to that right here, right on the home page. Roadmap. Our roadmap. So dates. What's all going to be on 8th, there? September Color coded. This is a bit of a bummer. The uh, 5.1. The the font size is really small if you have a high resolution display. Uh, uh, so that's actually been flagged red, so it's slightly delayed, but uh, we'll get there. And Scroll down a little bit, can you please? I can. Actually, let's scroll the whole thing down. There we go, platform, Windows 10 Universal Apps Support. So September, what was that, September 8th? That was, yes. Okay, so that is the publicly announced day from Unity as to when these bits will become active. Cool. Yeah, check that out yourself. All right, so let's look back at the slides here. on uh, For Visual Studio and Windows 10 dev settings, there's a couple changes here. Um, when you load up your Windows 10 solution in Visual Studio, and uh, if, if you do this today, for example, it wants you to enable developer mode for Windows 10. And if you were to click on the link that shows up, again, this is from Visual Studio, settings for developer, you now have operating system integrated settings. So when I click on settings for developers, my settings app loads up here. Don't use developer features, sideload apps, and developer mode. So you just select developer mode, and from that standpoint, you're good to go. On the phone, it looks just a little bit different. You just dial one. Oh. <laughs> well, let's go back to one here. <laughs> uh, you, you can search on your phone. This is Windows Phone 10, which is also available. Um, search for in your settings, devel or developers, and you'll see four developers. So that's number one. Number two, once you turn that on, you'll get prompted. Um, basically says, hey, uh, this is essentially going to allow you to sideload apps on your phone. Do you want to do that? Yep. So I don't have to tap seven times oh, on no. some. No, no tapping seven Sphere. times. <laughs> <laughs> nope, this is this is pretty straightforward. <laughs> uh, then just like you would see on on uh, like I showed you in the desktop Windows 10 here, uh, the mobile, same exact options here. Don't use side load and developer mode. Nice. And then away you go. Okay, now compiling. When you compile for uh, uh, release and master builds, you are using .NET native. Uh, if .NET Native has no dependencies, otherwise than having your system be able to support it, uh, but .NET Native is different than if you've been using .NET for a while, you might have heard of NGEN, uh, and that would essentially uh, pre just in time compile, pre JIT they call it, your assemblies um, down to native code. So it was an intermediate language; it compiled it out, and uh, with .NET Native, that's with NGEN still had a dependency on the .NET framework. Um, .NET Native has no dependency on the framework. It, it fully compiles it out to native code with no dependencies, uh, which is really neat. Now, it allows you to start 60% faster, 15, 20% less memory. Uh, it's, it's fast. Now, if you happen to get the Windows 10 bits now and compile it, your compilation process might take a little bit. So I'm not going to show you the full compilation process. I will do everything but compile, although I could surely kick off my compilation process. .NET Native is still being optimized, and uh, the, the compile process takes a little bit right now, but that will be uh, optimized for release. If you do a debug build, you are still using, a, you're using core CLR, so it's not going through the same long process here. Images. This one kind of gets everybody, and this is uh, virtually the exact same right now uh, between Windows 8.1 and Windows 10. So you, you really need to change the default images, because when you create a Windows Store build from Unity, the um, Default images will be set. There's five of them, and you can see here on the screen, and Unity will just kind of set their logo. You want to go in and make sure you change them. Uh, don't deploy an app with Unity's logos. <laughs> I've seen folks uh, <laughs> yeah, get right. rejected for that, so just as a heads up, you'll, you'll want to change that, and I'll show you where you can change that momentarily here. Now, this tool is, uh, is pretty neat, and I'll show you this in the web browser in a second here. This will generate you a whole bunch of images. I've actually filtered it down to just the ones that you're going to need here. Notice one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. 
in the editor interface. I'm just kind of mapping these out here for you. And I have a link to a document at the end of this, a uh, little quick start guide that I wrote, where you can actually look at this in the future. I'll give you the URL for that. Uh, so if you want to go back down the road, and I'll keep this updated for Windows 10. This is where those images map to. So in the uh, Unity editor interface, that's from the files you download. If you look at number one here, you're going to